Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessa and this is my first ever vlog talking to a camera just right there on my tripod. But I know you guys probably looked into this video because either too cool, too awesome, and you're hopeful of getting a job at Emirates as a cabin crew just as I was. A disclaimer, um, if you get tips from me, it does not guarantee that you're going to get the job at Emirates Airlines because the whole process is different for everybody and it depends on where you're at, like your country and all that stuff. Do not work for the HR either. Sharing with you guys my experience when I went as a cabin crew because I'm, it's crazy. I know where you're at. You're looking at a bunch of, you know, uh, YouTube videos, you're looking up Google, um, you're, you're on cabincrew.com, you're looking at Instagram hashtags, EK Crew, Emirates Cabin Crew, Emirates Crew, and everything Emirates is like your brain is filled with Emirates thoughts. I know where you're at. It's very familiar to me how you guys feel. Um, if this is your dream job, if you've been you know, dreaming about this job the whole entire life um, or you're just kind of like, oh, Emirates Cabin Crew what else? and you guys know you're gonna have to be moving to Dubai in the middle of the desert but it's cool because Dubai is where it's at <laughs> as for the presentations um, they give you a presentation of first of all the requirements of what you need to be an Emirates Airline cabin crew, what it's like to live in Dubai, you know, all that other fun stuff. It's pretty much Emirates and Dubai. That's what you learn from and then you can ask the recruiters questions if you have any. Um, I think you talk about like the differences between your culture and, and Dubai's culture. You have to make sure you know where you're getting yourself into before you even apply and you know, go to an assessment day like that because it's a lengthy process. You hand in your resume and pi a picture or two. Some people gave two pictures. I gave one and then my resume was only like condensed into one page. Make sure that you don't have too many pages for your resume because they're not going to be able to read all through that and then you get a chance to um, hand in an updated one anyway before you join so yeah condense it as short as you can just like you know make sure you have at least one page I'll show you guys a picture um, of the one that I sent or handed in right now after you handed in your resume and all yeah you have to wait if you get selected for the next round I for some reason did not feel like I was chosen during that time because you know like I went, um, I went up to the recruiter because she's sitting on the, by the table and she's receiving obviously everyone else's CVs and pictures but she didn't really say anything like I gave her a handshake and all that stuff but she didn't really say anything I just felt like she was looking at me just kind of profiling I don't know <laughs> what it is but yeah she didn't really say anything so I felt like like I didn't get the job, overthink it, um, don't get too nervous as much as you can. I felt defeated, I'm telling you right now, I felt defeated that for my second try, I'm not even going to pass through the first round. You know, everyone's anxious whether or not their names were chosen. And then after 15 minutes, um, we got the results and from 80 people or so that were at the assessment day, um, only 36 people got chosen and got into the next round. Because I got chosen into the next round, I was very happy and you know, I got back on my attitude, the right attitude. I'm like, yes, I can do this. We have a chance, Jessa, we got this. And yeah, you have to have that confidence in you. It's not like being a total, you know, all into yourself type of person, but you just have to believe in yourself because heck, no one else in that room will believe you as much as you can believe in yourself so give yourself that confidence boost yourself up because at the end of the day they're going to look for people that are confident that are looking into 
you know, actually dealing with customers that are maybe great, right? Okay, so for the second round, it depends on where you go and depends on the recruiters. Um, but what I've heard are you get an object and you have to think in groups of three what types of um, other uses you can do for what other three types of uses you can use for that particular object and then after that we got a picture of a destination and we had to think in groups of six I think something like that of you know things that you can do at that particular destination and then all this mind you you will um, present it to everyone else so just a tip for you guys when you do this um, when you go through the whole like group assessment you have to pretty much learn how to work in a group uh, make sure you don't talk over anybody um, make sure you respect other people's opinions and their ideas um, and if it ever gets too quiet and you still have time to discuss just think of ways to kind of bring out more ideas and all that stuff so it's a mirror what can we do a mirror with a mirror it's flat it's shiny it's this it's that whatever it is um yeah be creative and then after that we already got cut so from 36 people i believe we went down to 24 yeah so from 36 people after that after the second round yeah after the second round people got sent home already so from 36 we went down to 24 people and then they divided us into three groups of eight my group and I were the last ones um, so I'm very thankful for that because we got to know more of each other going back and forth of what the scenario could be and how we should talk to each other to respect one another um, we were given 10-15 minutes probably to solve that one scenario after the third stage with the role play um, right away they give us the results they were like okay so 1, 2, 25 or like 21, 23, blah 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 are in the rest of you guys unfortunately it's not the time um for you guys but yeah uh, my name was called and it was crazy because i didn't pass this round um the first time that i went to an assessment day so i was definitely happy for that i was ecstatic um it was a crazy feeling i felt so proud of myself and you know everyone else that um went through it you know in our group especially and then you know because it felt like wow I'm that much closer to the next step I'm that much closer to getting the job and then so we go outside of the room and told us to wait like 10 minutes or so there were about 13 or 14 of us who got through the final round and yeah they kept saying that there was another round but um we, when we actually went into the room, we were given um, paperwork done and like, you know, how to get ready for your final interview, what you should need. It was crazy because it felt so unreal to me that I'm getting a final interview with Emirates Airlines. And um, mind you, this was a big deal for me because I just graduated college and it was you know you look for jobs and all that stuff but you don't really find them right away as you expected it you know, while you're in still in college it's like oh after college I'm gonna get a job everywhere and the jobs will just be lining up for me and it's not always the case so when I got the final interview I was like wow this is amazing I'm that much closer to you know my dream jobs and whatever it is you're at the same position um honestly just keep faith and keep hoping and keep working towards your goals because it's gonna be a crazy ride i might be doing a whole series about this whole job process and everything just because i know um if you're looking into getting a job at emirates you are just looking through everything on the internet right now um so yeah I hope that helped you guys. Um, I'll be talking 
about my final interview experience in the next video so stay tuned and good luck